now. <laughs> uh, like having you around, believe Thank you. me. Ladies, how do you know if your husband is cheating? That's a question mm -hmm. many women are asking. What are the telltale signs? Well, joining us with some valuable insight is the author of Stop Getting Dumped. Welcome relationship expert Lisa Daly. Good to have you here, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Hi, Lisa. Me. You Hi. provided us with some stats, one of which just astounds me. 80% mm -hmm. of marriages, in 80% of marriages, at least one party has a, an affair. Right. It's shocking, isn't it? It's amazing because it, it used to be about 50% of marriages, and we've seen as more women have entered the workforce, more women are having affairs, they have more opportunity for affairs, and those numbers are just going up, 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 up. Well, for women who are watching, what are the telltale signs they should look for that might tell them their husbands are cheating? Well, the first place you should look is in your bank account because when people tend, when they start having an affair or they're thinking about having an affair, they tend to do one of two things. Things. They either were sp will spend a lot of money they weren't spending before because mm -hmm. they're buying new clothes or they're paying for those dates. Right. Or they start, if, uh, and men tend to do this more often than women do, they start hoarding money because they're sort of, you know, going ahead to the divorce and they're thinking, oh. I don't want to share that money. Oh, they so start I'm... buying gym memberships. Right. So, yeah. That's another <laughs> wow. sign. Doesn't that happen? The gym membership or a dramatic change in your wardrobe or a new cologne or perfume, mm -hmm. all those changes in the way that you look definitely are big signs. Well, maybe it's just like a midlife crisis, right? The, and they're, and they're, a lot of those things sort of go hand in hand. A lot mm. of times people feel like they really need to revamp what's going on. They're bored in their marriage or they're unhappy. Yeah. And that's one of the things that really makes us ripe for an affair. Mm. But it, we, we certainly do see those same signs for someone who's going through a midlife crisis. But there are more for right, right. an affair. So if a woman finds out that her, fact, that her husband is, in fact, cheating, what should she do? Well, the first thing you want to do, because you don't know how it's going to play out, is make sure that you really know what, what you're accusing them of before you actually confront them. If you have a little bit of information and, and some suspicions, the last thing you want to do is, you know, take your husband into the corner of the garage and say, I, I know you're doing something. Right. Because basically what they'll do is deny it and cover their tracks a little better for the next time. So you want to make sure that you really gather the evidence so that you know that you're, what you're dealing with because there's no way to get past it if you don't have all of the facts. Is there any way to repair a marriage and be happy for the rest of their lives even after an affair? Mm. Yes and no, and it really depends on how much of a, a deal breaker cheating is in your own personal mm. relationship. You know, for, for me personally, I, I, that's not something I could get past. I, um, I love my husband. I think he's a wonderful guy, but that kind of a betrayal is not something that I could personally get over. And actually, he he feels the same way. We're really on the same page about that. But a lot of relationships, they do move past that. They they sort of retool. They figure out what it was that you know that made the relationship go off track. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of things. There are two kinds of people who cheat. One person is someone who maybe normally wouldn't cheat, but the opportunity presents itself. Mm -hmm. And another person is the chronic cheater, and he, he cheated on you when you were dating, and he cheated on you right. with the, you know, the playboy. Making yeah. out with the bridesmaid yeah. yeah. at yeah. the wedding. And, and that person generally cannot be reformed. Which, uh, which is more common? I would guess the one who doesn't have make a pattern of it, right? Right. Gener so, generally speaking, and a lot of affairs just happen because yeah. of opportunity. So, so where are these affairs most likely to occur? I mean, are they start at the work workplace or you know at a social 70 percent of affairs happen in the workplace that's where hmm. they start and and you have to really be careful when you're when you're thinking about whether or not your your spouse or your marriage might be right for that kind of thing it's the people that are in our closest proximity that we have to be concerned about the most so the people you see every day that you have a, a repeated relationship with so people at work and people, you know, in your immediate circle of friends. Well, let's say you have that urge, because you say more and more women are cheating now. Right. Let's say you feel it coming on, you feel that you're drawn to somebody else. What can you do? How do you address it with your spouse? Like, you know, you don't want to say, hey, I'm close to cheating on you. Sh <laughs> yeah, right. Shape up or ship out. But <laughs> right. what, what can you do to work on the relationship to prevent it from happening? But you do have to say, I really feel like things are going off track here. You, it, it's, it can be more damaging to say, I feel like I might have an affair sometime in the right. next month yeah. or so. So just be ready for that. <laughs> That's not good. But if you say, gosh, I really feel like things are going off track mm -hmm. and we're really, you know, running our relationship into a ditch. And we need to change things because I fear that if, if we don't change things, something 
something bad yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. And just give your spouse sort of that wake-up call because most times you know what's going on in your marriage. And, and a lot of times these affairs happen because we've spent too many weekends sitting on the couch, watching, you know, what's on TV every single night of the week. We don't talk anymore. We don't go out. We're just, mm -hmm. you know. What if, what if, let's say, an affair happens? There's that stigma. And everybody's looking at you, all your friends, your family members, like, oh, my gosh, she's still with him. She's still with him. How do you overcome that? That is one of the hardest things. You for run for president. Right. <laughs> there you go. That's the way to do it. Or governor. Right. Exactly. Have to throw that yeah. in. So that's one, something that's really hard for people to overcome. And a lot of times that is harder for, for women especially to overcome more than the betrayal of the cheating itself. Right. right. It's right. more difficult to deal with the fact that your friends are going to think you're not very smart for staying with your husband mm -hmm. or, or that everybody knows at your church. And really the, the thing you need to decide is whether or not you want to keep the relationship based on how you feel about your spouse and and not give that you know what will people think right right well you know one thing that I think many couples wrestle with is the loss of the romantic spark you know, mm -hmm. can you reclaim it can you reignite it and Lisa has some advice on how to spice up your marriage by dating your husband and we'll get into that when we come back Coming up. back with Lisa Daly the author of stop getting dumped and 15 minutes of shame and she's a relationship expert. We were talking about affairs, and we mentioned a statistic earlier. I just want to clarify, 80% of marriages, or in 80% of marriages, at least one partner what? has an affair. Do you mean an actual physical affair? An actual or? physical affair. I know, shocking. Wow. I know. And I can't even imagine, I'm sure the numbers of, uh, of people who have sort of that emotional internet affair, yeah, they'd yeah. probably bump it up a little bit. But I think the same, mm -hmm. you know, you have a, an overlap there. Right. Some of the same people that are doing that online are also doing it in person. Okay, so when couples have been together for a while, they sometimes need to rekindle the spark. And you say right. women need to start dating their husbands. Didn't dating end with the wedding? <laughs> I know. That's what everybody says. But it shouldn't end with the wedding. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of times after you've been married for a couple of years, you end up with nothing to talk about about what happened on TV last night and, you know, who left their toenails under the couch <laughs> right. and who's supposed to take the kids to the PTA meeting. Yeah. So it's really important to date your husband. And it's really not difficult. It's not like you have to make a big, huge deal like you do when you're, when you're first dating. But you, you certainly need to make the effort to spend that time together. And you can sort of shake things up by just changing one element of your date night. So how often should you go on a date night with your spouse? Well, I think at a very minimum, you should try and go at least once a month. Mm -hmm. And that's not a lot. Most people can, you know, work a babysitter uh, that way and or, you know, get the mother-in-law or somebody to, to babysit for you if you have kids. And if, even if you have a busy work schedule, usually you can manage a, a weekend a month. Well, you have some great advice for rekindling that spark and a lot of all the advice has to do with change right you say change the place you know, change the place of what right well a lot of times when we we will schedule a date with our husband but we but we go to the same place over and over again we always go have dinner at outback or you know wherever the same restaurant so one of the things you want to do is change the place where you normally go instead of going to the restaurant maybe go take a tango lesson there are a lot of these neat um, adventure companies where you can for 50 or 60 dollars learn something like you know calf roping or yeah. you know how to jump out of an airplane <laughs> and those kind of things learning something new with your spouse that's something that really gives you a good spark and also gives you something to talk about later yeah, yeah. you say when we talk we should change the subject though too change right. up the conversation right well another thing that we do is you know we always will talk about the thing that happened that day because yeah. when you're when you're first dating you sort of share all those stories when you're getting to know each other and then you're kind of out of stories and you, you only have pretty much just what happened to you that day right. so it's you know this is the how coffee. was your day dear exactly yeah. Exactly. So start asking those questions like you did when you first started dating. What was your you know, your first college essay about? What, when was the first time you remember being really scared? Those kind of things. You know, what, what was your first experience at sleepover mm. camp? Yeah. Those kind of things that, that really are questions that you get into when you first start dating, but you forget about later. Yeah. And that, that change applies to your style, too, right? Like your clothes, your color, your, your, your fragrance. Right. A lot of times we get into the same habit. We wear the same, you know, I wear the same tracksuit or dress or whatever we're wearing. So wear something really dramatically different. If you always get dressed up, then go out in, in jeans. If you, you know, are usually wearing jeans or, you know, or something more casual, you know, woo, go 
you know, get the big yeah. long red dress on and, and go a little nuts, do your hair up through the, through the whole nine yards. So change your scent and also like would change your color? Right. Well, here's something really interesting. Changing your scent. There have been a number of studies at the University of Chicago that showed that men associate the scents of cinnamon and vanilla with love. Ah. So instead of your usual perfume, wear a little something with cinnamon and vanilla kind of spices things up. And as far as changing your color, um, studies have shown that, that we, uh, when we wear the color red, our, it mimics attraction for us. So wow. our hearts race a little, our pupils dilate, just Very like being in love. That is good. What about changing the place where you make love? It doesn't always have to be the Absolutely. master bedroom, right? Absolutely. Get a little wild in the guest room. Get freaky in the backyard. If you have a fence, people, you have to have a fence. Honey, put up the fence. I'll be home at 7. That's right. <laughs> uh, 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 Lisa has a book signing tonight, her new book, at uh, Book Passage... Uh, Book Passage in Corte Madera, 6 p.m. This is wonderful. It's awesome. Great, Great advice. advice. Thank, Thank you so very much. Very good. You've helped a lot of relationships out there. Thanks so much, Thank Lisa. Thank you.